Hi, welcome. Uh, so this talk is about PDV and uh, open source video editing uh, and what brought us to the current state of PTV. So my name is Edward Hervey. I've been using free software since 1995. I've got a master's in computer science, which is completely irrelevant. Um, in 1999, I wanted to have a video editor. I mean, after several years of using free software, I was like, I'm, I need a video editor. Um, <coughs> uh, something that was actually in the free software spirit. Uh, and then, a few years later, I decided to actually write one. Uh, so, uh, what else is there to say? Oh yeah, I also co-started Collabora Multimedia in 2007, which is a company specialized in uh, GStreamer uh, development consulting, uh, along with Wim Timans, the uh, who co-started GStreamer in 1999. So what are we going to do during this next 45 minutes? I'm going to explain quickly the goals of PDB and give you a demo of what I can do currently. Uh, then we'll see how GStreamer and GNonlin have made PTV possible. Uh, so we're going to start from real GStreamer basics and go all the way to uh, just before PTV. Uh, then afterwards show how with GStreamer and Python, you can actually take any random idea, uh, make a GStreamer element out of it, and have it usable in any GStreamer application. And then if you have some questions, I'll be glad to answer them. So PDV is a video editor, but it has a few goals. Uh, the first of all is no limits. Uh, not that trashy dance song of the 90s, but actual no limits. Uh, no limits in number of tracks, no limit in the length of the duration of your timeline or the number of timelines that you can embed it within each other. Uh, no limits in what format it can support. Um, the vast majority of video editors nowadays, they're still limited to a certain number of format they can accept uh, and export to. Also, we want it to be more than a video editor, a platform for video editing. Um, video editing is quite wide ranging. Um, it has some specialized use cases, so we want it to be, we want PDV to be flexible and reusable. One important goal, um, some might disagree with it, but I'll explain why it was a good choice, is to leave all the multimedia processing to GStreamer, uh, a multimedia framework. So currently, PTV does not have any hard dependency on, for example, FFmpeg. Um, you can actually run PTV with um, non-patent encumbering codecs like Theora and Vorbis. You can use those, you can ed edit them, and you can output in Theora Vorbis. Um, but also that means that if there's a new codec that comes uh, around, PTV will automatically support it. We also decided to write it from the bottom up. Uh, instead of coming up with a fancy UI that does nothing, uh, that does nothing, and then fill in the blanks underneath and realize that, um, uh, I gotta say, it's not that obvious, we actually started from the ground up. So take starting from GStreamer, going all the way up. Uh, finally, one of the goals is to write it in Python. Um, we want the actual software development to be really fast. Um, and we can combine Python, uh, which is an interpreted language, with uh, GStreamer, which is entirely written in C, and the result is quite fast. So currently, you can import and export to whatever format GStreamer supports. Uh, if on your, with the plugins that you have installed on your system, so if you can double click on a video file and it opens in a GStreamer media player, you can edit it in PTV. Um, we can do some basic editing features, adding, removing uh, sources from the timeline, trimming, cutting them, uh, linking and non-linking them, uh, using static pictures that you've taken with uh, your photo camera and capture from the webcam. So let's have a look at what it looks like.
so for those of you who use a video editor, uh, this should be quite familiar. Um, so let's grab some files. Uh, I'm just grabbing some files at random uh, just to prove the point that it can import anything that GStreamer can support. We can also preview the files. Hello? Oh, errors from FFmpeg. Well, what a surprise. Um, going on here? Give me a second. <laughs> Sorry? So we've got a couple of different files. Uh, we can preview them. Is the XV output broken? Or no, here we go. You see the video? Yeah, okay. So you can preview your files um, very easily. Uh, we can actually drop them then in the timeline. So there's a couple from Guadec in 2006 in um, uh, Barcelona. Then afterwards, you can basically scrub through your various files. Uh, here we've got a nice pan, somebody going away, an inside shot, and no, in fact, I'd prefer the inside shot there. So let's just move it around. And we've got everything has been moved around and here I want it to actually end here so uh, no oh yeah okay fine I can select the other one Oi. <laughs> what okay here we I apologize, this is the worst demo ever. <coughs> okay, so I can then go, for example, at the end, decide to trim it, move the end, it's been moved um, here. I just want the pan to start from here so I can cut it here. I can then decide to remove the beginning, move everything back together, or I can leave a little bit of black in the middle. I'll put this bigger so that you can see. There we are. Switches to black can see the other video. Uh, you can also take pictures. So do I have one around here? Ah. <laughs> well, okay, fine. It's not free software related, but whatever. Where's it gone? There we go. So is me and my father. So you can just hook up everything together and dis then decide to render it. Choose a file. Then you can, as I was saying, like there's no limit in uh, PTV. Nothing is hard coded in PTV. Here, um, the choice of output formats, containers, audio codecs are entirely based on what GStreamer plugins are available in the system. Um, but since we like free software and we don't like patents, we're going to choose org vorbis 
the ore. Okay, render it. In the background you can see it rendering. Thank you. And then if we go and open it. We've got our little video. And that was just with a couple of mouse clicks and crashes. <coughs> Trust me, it never happens, except in conferences. So um, that's basically the current state of PTV. Yeah, it's been five years. And we're only at that point. In fact, we. Um, I've been working since the beginning. I was, in fact, working on my own. Uh, and it's only recently that we've decided, uh, sorry, that m my company, Collabora Multimedia, have decided to fund uh, two extra developers. So for the past three months, uh, a good three months, we're, in fact, three people working on PTV. Uh, the version which I showed you is the 0 0.11 branch, which is no longer worked on. Um, we've refactored a lot of the internals. Um, based on feedbacks, uh, real, uh, I gotta say real world usage. Uh, so normally within, within the next three, four weeks, uh, we should have the first new release, uh, which will be, uh, I guess, which hopefully should not crash like it did just there. So <coughs> it's been five years, but in the past five years, it wasn't, uh, I gotta say, I wasn't just sleeping, drinking, and going out all the time. Uh, there's been a lot of work in GStreamer. Since we decided to use GStreamer uh, as the base uh, for PTV, uh, there was a lot of work to be done in there. So what is GStreamer, very quickly? It's an open source multimedia framework. Some like to call it the de facto open source multimedia framework. Um, that means that if you're writing plugins uh, for codecs, uh, applications that use GStreamer don't have to be rewritten. They automatically benefit from the new codec. And the opposite, uh, uh, and if you're writing an application, you don't have to worry about um, uh, patents or whatsoever. Um, you get everything for free. So we're going to start with the basics of GStreamer. Uh, GStreamer works as a, uh, as a graph. So you have elements producing data other elements consuming data. You can have decoders, encoders, uh, demuxers, video filters. Uh, there's a lot of elements, so I'll just show you. So using a simple tool, you can actually list the, all the elements available on your system. So I have 950 elements on my system. Um, of which you might recognize some in it, like all the FFmpeg demuxers, muxers, decoders, so we automatically export them, but also plenty of other things like OpenGL plugins, decoders, uh, and so forth. So let's look at the very basic. So we're just going to take an element that produces video frames uh, and take another element that displays them on the screen. And we end up with some video on the screen. Wonderful. But since uh, GStreamer is very flexible, I can decide to add some elements in between. Can you see at the top? Yeah. Uh, like, for example, there's an element that adds the uh, current position. So now we have, yeah. there we are. now we have the time overlaid on the video. Um, All those elements have also got properties. So we can have a look at using that, GS, that inspector from earlier on. We can say, what properties does 
the video test source element have? So here we have all the element properties, starting from here. Some of them are very cryptic, but here we have one which is interesting, which is the um, the pattern. So the, it's the type of video which is going to output. So we can decide to, instead of having the default uh, SMT color bars, we can decide to have random noise or um, some blink. So blink is the property name, pattern 12. Yep, I hope there's nobody who has epilepsy in the room. But basically we end up with the same thing as before except that the video is slightly different. So, <coughs> this is just debugging. I'm now going to show you uh, how you can do a very simple script that comes to, that does the same thing. Here we go. It's written in Python. So we just have a few lines in it which are really relevant. Here we create our pipeline, which is the GStreamer uh, top-level object. Um, and we ask it to pass what we're giving to it. So for example here, this was the simple example I was using earlier on, my first, very first example. And I ask it to pass it and create a pipeline for me. And then afterwards I need uh, a main loop because in GStreamer all the processing happens in other threads. So it's a great advantage for an application because it doesn't hang if uh, the processing takes too much CPU. Um, uh, and then I need to listen to uh, the bus. Uh, the bus is a way for the pipelines to return messages to the application. That's to say, oh, there's an error, or oh, your file is finished. All this kind of information. And then afterwards, we've just got a simple method to start it. That's to say that we're going to set the pipeline to playing, and data is going to start flowing I in it. So we end up with the same result. Okay, fine. <coughs> now, that's it. Um, so it's very flexible. You can do a lot of things with it. You can do, uh, it's also got network elements to do voice over IP uh, straight out of the box. As easy, as easily as what I just show. Um, so you just set up a pipeline with all the elements and you can do a voice over IP communication. But we need, uh, for video editor, we need um, what's called nonlinear editing. Um, for those who've been wondering, it's just quite simple nonlinear editing. It's taking segments of um, video or audio and arranging them through time. So, oops, sorry. The analogy with GStreamer is that earlier on, when I was setting up pipelines, they were static. I set up a pipeline and then I put it to play. It's linear editing. That's to say that I could have set something to play and then set something else to play. Whereas um, for nonlinear editing, uh, I wrote a series of um, plugins for GStreamer which allow you to say, no, in fact, I don't want you to start from the beginning. I want you to use such part of, the, of this stream and output it as if it was at such other position. And on and on and on and on and on. So let me just show you, based on the previous example, a little modification which shows you how you can do that easily. So the same example as earlier on, except that here I'm creating a blank pipeline. I don't want it to do all the magic for me. I create, uh, this is how you create elements in GStreamer, GST element factory make. And then I say that I want a composition, a genome link composition, which is um, the analogy in uh, an editing tool would be the timeline that you see. It's the container. Then I need an object that can control my streams, allowing me to say, I want you to start from such position 
and offset it in such position in the timeline. That's called the GNL source, on which I'm going to set various properties. First of all, I want it to start at out taking data from a certain position. That's called the media start in uh, gene online terminology, and it's called the endpoint in editing terminology. So I want it to start at a certain position, and then output for take five seconds, and I'll put it for five seconds. Then afterwards, it's um <coughs> that source is just a container. It's just a GStreamer container. We can put anything in it. So here I decide to put um, uh, an element which I wrote, which is a single decode bin. It does all the magic of decoding streams for you. I'll just show you very quickly on the command line what decode bin is. So I want to take a file, I want the video to be decoded, and I want to display it. So so to get data from a file, I use a file source element. I set the property to wherever it is. I can then use the uh, decode bin element, which is a magic element that will automatically figure out the container format, do the type finding, have a look if you have an element that can demux it, that can decode it, etc., until it provides you raw video and raw audio. And then I decide to take an element that can display it on the screen. I set everything to play, and we now have the video that plays on its own. So that was just to show you what decode bin is. So what I want is that, but I don't want it to start from the beginning. So then afterwards the rest of the rest is just connecting it to an auto video sync. So the arguments of this player are the file name and the offset I want it to start at in seconds. So So I'm going to take the same file, and ins just to show you that it's the same, I I'm going to make it start at zero seconds from the beginning. So it starts at the beginning, his foot comes through. But it shows it for five seconds, instead of playing it forever, or, or at least until the end of the file. So it's already been doing something. Now I want it to start ten seconds in. It started ten seconds in, and after five seconds, it's finished. There's no more data. So we've basically done several things here. We've limited the incoming stream and we've offset the beginning. But we can go several steps further. So, um, right. Um, uh, Robin was showing earlier on uh, EDLs. EDLs are just a list of files that you want to use. Start in specifying I want to start at a given position uh, for uh, such a duration. Um, so it looks something like this. I wrote my own very simple, stupid uh, format of EDL just to make uh, an example. <coughs> so here we go. Uh, base, uh, can you see it? So this is a very simple uh, format. What I'm saying is that I want to use uh, this file. I want to start using it from the second zero until second two. And then afterwards, f that file from second one to second two, then again the first one from second zero to second one, then from second 30 to second 35, etc. So a souped up version of a playlist. And If we have a look at this little script, it has the same content as the previous uh, example that was just playing one simple segment, except that it has a little parser oops, sorry, here, which is going to read all that data and create a genome, the adequate gene online source. So if we look at that function, we have make source, it is going to create a GNL source and it's going to set the proper duration, media duration, uh, uh, media start, which is the endpoint. 
uh, and finally the position where it should be put on the output. So five lines of code. So I'm just asking it to read it, and then it automatically is going to play the correct segments on its own. Since these are uh, genome, and is also the genome in composition is a GStreamer element, so I'm using it in a very simple pipeline here, which means that I can also add um, new. Uh, I can use it in any GStreamer pipeline. So, for example. This one just has an extra element inserted into it, which is the time overlay, which shows you what are the actual values being used at that time. So here, we can see the time which is at the top is the value of the frames that are being outputted. Uh, not the global position, but the original position. And, and so forth. Um, if I wanted to render that, it would require me putting, adding a few elements, adding a video encoder, a muxer, a file sync, and it would automatically render that to a file. Just a second. So these are basically the building blocks of um, PTV. <coughs> but it can go even further, because combining GStreamer and Python, you can actually very quickly prototype uh, the missing part for your application, even though your application is written in C. So you can write full fully-fledged GStreamer elements uh, in Python and have it used in any other GStreamer application. So for example, last week, I was like, I'd actually like to have some titles in PTV. But the problem is that there's no element, uh, no GStreamer element, to be able to generate a simple title video source. That's to say a title in white over a black background, and so that I could display it for like five seconds at the beginning of my video clips. So let's have a look at what GStreamer, what GStreamer provides and what it doesn't. So I'm going to be searching for something that can for an element that can handle text. So here we have several elements. Uh, one of them seems interesting. It's um, text overlay. So we can have a look at all its properties. So what does it say? It adds a text string on top of a video buffer. Well, it's not exactly that I want. Um, if we look at what it takes uh, as input, it in fact takes two pads. It takes a video pad, the video over which it's going to overlay the text, and a text pad um, where you'll be able to provide it the text. So what I need to do is in fact add uh, something that can provide the text and input and then wrap all of that so that it just ends up being one GStreamer element where I give it some text and it outputs the video. The first thing that I need to do is actually have a, an element that can provide, um, that can inject, in fact, in GStreamer, in the GStreamer pipeline, uh, some text, a text stream. Um, so instead of having audio or video, we have text. So very simply, I create a subclass of uh, base source, which is the um, base class for all source elements. And then I just have to implement a couple of methods which are the main, the main one being do create. 
So this is the uh, method that is actually going to return the newly created buffer. And in it, I create a new buffer. And the content of it is just text. Um, it's the text that, sorry, um, it's the text that I'm providing as a property. And then I set uh, a timestamp on it and a duration. So that is all fine for providing text. But the problem is that, that the text overlay element also needed a video input, a stream over which to overlay video. So I very quickly created another element, which is a subclass of GST bin. So bins in GStreamer are container elements in which you can put other GStreamer elements. Oops. <coughs> so in it, I'm going to put um, an element that can generate video. So the video test source element I was showing earlier on. Uh, I want a black background, so I set the proper property. Uh, I use the text overlay, so the one that can overlay um, the text over video, and I set a certain font. Then, if we have a look at the output of, here we go, what this element can output, it can only output a very specific um, format of video. Uh, in this case, uh, YUV in the I420 color space. The problem is that um, elements might, like for example, my video output might only be able to handle RGB or the encoder I wish to connect it to might only be able to handle an another color space. So I'm using a converter element, um, ill-named FFmpeg color space, to convert from one color space to another. And then I, all of that, I add all of those elements inside myself. I link them up together. So video test source to text overlay to the color space. And then afterwards, I expose the various pads. So the, the missing part here is still to feed it the text stream. So I connect the text sync. I expose the text sync pad of text overlay as my sync pad. And I expose the color space source pad as my source pad. And finally, because I like writing stuff in Python, I've got an element that links everything together just to make it convenient. So same thing, it's a GST bin subclass, it's a container, and then I add the two elements that I created previously, add them to myself, link them together, and finally expose the last element's source pad as my source pad. So what I've done here is in fact create, I've created three, G, three G streamer elements uh, entirely in Python. So this took me um, a good, I don't know, maybe 30 minutes to write. Um, and then afterwards, it, I've got a sample application just to show you um, how, it can, how it's actually true GStream elements. I create a pipeline. Uh, I create my title source element. And then I use a, a video output. Here I'm using XV image sync, but I can replace it with whatever other element. And then I connect it together. And then this is the same uh, thing that we had in the previous script. So let's have a look at it. Okay, it works, and it actually told me that I need to give it a title. Ah, stupid bash. Okay, hey, here we go. <laughs> it's even worse than that. Anyway, <laughs> the point being is that there, I can just uh, give it any um, title that I want. And it's created what I wanted. That's to say a video stream that has got the, uh, a title and that can be used with uh, any video sync. Um, the problem is that I can only use it from my Python script. I actually need to be able to use it from PTV or any other GStreamer application. So since I'll just show you. There we go. What we can do, here we go. Ah, uh, second. 
There we go. This is my, so this is a slight variation of the previous script. Um, what I did was to add to my uh, top level uh, element, my title source, I added a few details uh, about what it is. Um, at the complete bottom of the file, I indicated this is specific to GStreamer. When you write uh, plugins in C, you have to indicate this kind of information. That's to say it's a known marker, which gives information on we provide. The name of my plugin is this. Um, the rank is something used for auto-plugging uh, in the magic uh, elements of GStreamer. And finally, I give it the class that I want to expose. That's to say my plugin. And if I take that and put it into the, if I take that file and put it into the, um, I'm going to say, uh, my home uh, GStreamer plugin repository, uh, you don't need to install them system-wide. You can put them in your home directory. I copy it there. And then using GST Inspect, which is a C tool, I can ask it if it if it finds my plugin. Oh, it does. Excellent. I now have something that wasn't available uh, a few minutes ago, uh, and writing only in Python. I now have a video title generator. I gave it a property, which we can see here. This is because all GStreamer elements we rely on, we rely on uh, G object. Uh, for introspection of the properties of plugins uh, and so forth. So I indicated using a special uh, marker uh, that I have a property which is called title, uh, which is a string property, which has a default value of uh, free software rocks, and it's a property that you can read and write. So in GST Inspect on that element, I can actually see, indeed, it has a property called title, which was a default value of false rocks. So let's try using it in a GST launch command line. Well, it seems to work pretty well. And there, I'm actually using it from um, a C GStreamer application. I can use Python plugins from C. And I can do everything I want with it. I mean, same as usual, I can put a time overlay over it. And then it displays the time over um, the video. So the last part is that I actually wanted it for PTV. So I'll just show you very quickly how uh, it can be added um, into PTV. So PTV is really a thin layer over everything I've just shown to you. Um, uh, well, except for the user interface. But it's the user interface plus a very thin layer over all of GStreamer, GNonLin, and it gives some, um, I'm going to say, um, it brings a lot of notion which, which makes sense in the video editing realm. So here, I have a simple uh, class which is a, a source factory. That's to say it's um, an element that can provide sources to be used in the timeline. Uh, and then I, spec I give it some basic information, like uh, it has a duration of one hour, because I don't want to have a, uh, a real limit. Uh, but the default duration should be five seconds. 
And then finally, the most important part here in two lines, I've actually added, um, if I want to use that source factory in my timeline, um, as I was explaining earlier on with gnonlin, it's using gnonlin internally and it needs to put something in each of, the, each of the sources. And in this case, it'll be using the title source element I just created. So if we switch back to PTV. I've now got the title creator which appears in the sources and I can drop it in it and I've now got my titles and I can take a video after that and put it just behind perfect and then now I've basically added um, a title generator uh, in a few hundred lines of, well, 100 line of Python code. Um, and it can be reused by C applications, not just by um, PTV. So here the point is that if you have, um, if you have some ideas of things that you would like to use in, uh, with GStreamer, you can actually prototype them really quickly in Python and we use them in any of your GStreamer application. I know, well, I'm like three minutes away from the end. <laughs> okay, um, so that I've already explained a little bit. So these are basically all the building blocks um, and what makes um, PTV so different from um, the other projects out there is that we rely on uh, GStreamer for the multimedia processing and Python for uh, the flexibility. But um, because of lack of resources, uh, I had to take some shortcuts. So that's why w the, there was quite a few hacks and uh, bad code in PTV. Uh, up to now. So we're currently redesigning, uh, well we have redesigned everything and we're now refactoring to suit that new design um, and there's a couple of interesting features in it. But since we've only got a few minutes left, um, I'll switch straight to questions if you have some questions to ask. Yes? Yes, it's something which I didn't have time to show, but we've got something called dynamic properties in GStreamer. So you can, um, well, a <laughs> couple of things. Uh, but basically, yes, GNOME can also control operations, for example. That's to say that uh, uh, GStreamer elements that take input uh, and not just output uh, data. Um, so, yes. Okay, I'm going to be, yeah, yeah. So what is the competition to PDV in the open source space? Um, all the other free software video editors, of course, um, in which is w and the po that was the point of my talk, is that in the way that we do it in the flexibility uh, sense uh, while keeping the performance of GStreamer, uh, I don't see any competition. Uh, <laughs> I think I knew... Uh, yeah, uh, We, we have an element in GStreamer that does um, blue screening and all of that. So if it's in GStreamer, you get it in PDV. That was the question, do we have blue screening in PDV? Are there any other questions? No? Well, thank you very much.